So you've made a GenBot, a very simple LEGO EV3 robot. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to teach you how to program that robot. So if you open the LEGO Mindstorm EV3 app on your computer, it will open to this page. Instead of playing around with anything here, what we want is over here in New Project. So if you click on New Project and New Project again and New Program, you can click open and open a blank program. In this black program, uh, in this blank program, it's called new program up here. That's the name of the program. And here is the name of the actual project. So we'll call this move forward. You can double click to change the name here and you can change it to anything that you like. I'm going to call it move forward. You can see a little star appears next to new program. That means the program's been changed and hasn't been saved yet. So if you go to file and save project, you can save it. Here we can change the name of the project. So I'm going to call it GenBot and I'm going to save it on my desktop for now. So now this project is called GenBot and the actual program is called Move Forward. I can come down here to the palette and use these blocks to help control my robot. So down here is a block for the medium motor, down here is the block for a single large motor, and these two are blocks to control two motors at the same time. You can use either, but I prefer this one called Move Tank because you can be very specific with what you want the left motor to do and the right motor to do. My robot is turned on, but it's not plugged into my computer. I can tell because down here it says no brick connected. So if I add a USB cable and plug it into the front of my brick, and if I put it into the side of my computer, and if I refresh, the software will look for a robot that's plugged into my computer. You can see it's searching and it's already popped something up for me. We just have to wait for that to stop spinning. So if I go back to the available bricks panel, I can see that Hawking is plugged in via USB. USB is the quickest and most reliable way to plug your robot into your computer. If I click on the port view, you can see that I have a large motor plugged into port A and another large motor plugged into port D. So over here on my brick, I need to tell it which ports to control. So I, it's saying here ports B and C, but I don't have ports B and C plugged into my brick. So I'm going to ch change that to A and D, because as you can see, these are the motors I have attached to my brick. Now, this section here controls motor A, this section here controls motor D. So this is how fast the motor will move. At 100, that's moving at 100% of its speed. If we go down below zero to a negative value, that means it's moving backwards. You can do the same with the other motor. We can go totally forward or totally backwards. So let's put them both at full speed moving forward. This section here tells the robot how many rotations to move. So the left motor and the right motor are going to move as fast as they can, but only for one 360 degree rotation. If I want to do a fraction of a rotation, I don't want it to go a full rotation, I can put in a decimal in here or if I need to get really specific, I can change it over here. So over here, it says I'm activating the motor for a specific number of rotations, or I could activate the motors for a specific number of degrees. So I could say 180 degrees, or I could say 90 degrees. It's totally up to me. Or I could set it for a specific amount of time. So I could say one second, three seconds and change it here. Finally, here is either on or off. 
so you can turn the motors on and they will keep rolling no matter what. I am going to set it for one full rotation. This here tells you what to do after it's finished that rotation. So you can get it to break, to stop after one full rotation, or you can just get it to stop giving the motors power, which means it will slowly come to a rest. I'm going to get it to stop after one full rotation. And now if I am holding my robot in my hand and I press play here, you can hear that noise. That little notification means that the robot received the program and you could hear the motors running for one full rotation. The other thing I can do is I can download the program onto my brick and that means I can remove the USB port and now I can run the uh, program off the brick without it being plugged in. So this is good once you've finalized your program and you know it works, then you can come onto your GenBot or onto the brick of your robot and then you can activate it.